Good evening and welcome to another video about uh, functional programming with R. So, in the previous videos I showed you how you could avoid writing loops using map, using reduce, uh, why that was useful, so it allows you to write more conc concise code, document it more easily, and also um, debug it more easily. Uh, in this video I'm going to show you uh, map2 which is a, a generalization of map and a situation where this might be useful. So map two, so map first of all takes one list as an input and one function. But there are variants of there's map two and there's pmap. So map two takes two lists as an input and a function that does something with these two lists, or rather with elements within these two lists. Remember also that in the last video I explained to you that in functional programming you always add two ingredients, you add a function and a list. And in R we have these very nice lists which are uh, da data frames. So here I'm going to show you an example where you have a data frame, this time with two columns, not just with one column, over which you want to map. So this is an example that I have used, um, or a use case that I have used uh, many, many times um, for reporting purposes. So I'm asked very often to generate many plots for, um, so in, in one of my previous jobs for different countries, now for uh, different uh, universities or whatever. So I have always many, many units of analysis and I need to make the same plot for all these units of analysis. So in the previous video I showed you how you could um, fit the same model, the same linear model, to many data sets. Here we're going to generate a ggplot over many uh, countries. So I'm using as an example the um, economics long data set, which is a data set contained in the ggplot2 package. So let's take a look. So it's this um, it's this uh, this uh, data frame with four columns, uh, with data f economic data from uh, Fred. So you have um, monthly data on s several variables, a, v a value, and I guess this probably is some kind of normalized deflated value or something. So this is uh, um, consumption, uh, I guess, consumption expenditures. It doesn't really matter what it is. What I want doesn't really matter for what I want to show you. But let's let's just take a look at the variables. So this must be a consumption expenditures. This is population. This I guess is savings and employment. Uh, unemployment rate I guess. And this one U M P. I don't know. But it doesn't matter. So let's suppose that I want to um, plot these four variables. And so I no these five variables. So I want to create five plots. Right. But it could very well have been a hundred variables or you know a hundred countries or a hundred uh, cities or whatever whatever your unit of analysis is right so what i'm going to show you is general generalizable to as many units as as you have that's not an issue so i, I write this function to generate this plot because i could of course just focus on the ggplot code that is here and copy and paste that five times but instead of copy and pasting it, do not repeat yourself, write a function. So really um, try to not repeat yourself because copy and pasting is error prone, right? So one first step is to at least, you know, write that, put that into a function. And then instead of um, copy and pasting this, these three lines, and again, just imagine that instead of five variables, I had uh, 50 variables. Instead of copy and pasting that 50 times, I, I just use this function, so I, I um, filter here over the variable that I want, PCE in this case, and then I can call make plot for over this variable, right? So this is um, this is my my uh, my plot. I'm happy. I have this title here, variable PCE, so it tells me which variable I'm looking at. And um, so oh, no, that's not what I want. Here we are. I I lost the focus there. So um, my function make plot takes two arguments, takes a data set and a variable. The variable here, this PCE string, is just for the uh, title. It's just to generate here this uh, title, right? Um, now that I have this, I could, for example, if I want to um, to create my plot for pop, I could copy and paste. I could 
and yeah maybe I could search and replace PCE by pop and now I can generate my uh, plot for the population and I could copy and paste that and keep doing that for uh, five times in this case or three more times and I would be finished but imagine that I have 50 variables imagine that I you that I have different data sets that I have to call this function over different data sets by the way this function is not very good because I have hard coded here the variables that I want to plot so for example here this only plots value but if we look here in the data set we have value 0 1 so I could also add that as an argument of my function but this will be another topic for another video because it introduces uh, another concept which is tidy evaluation so this will be for complete uh, a video completely dedicated to that but here um, let's forget about this hard coding for now and let's just assume that I have 50 variables I would have to copy and paste that 50 times which is not ideal because uh, and actually in it could even if you copy and paste if you forget to search and replace correctly or whatever you could have here a title that is completely wrong so for example maybe i forgot to change my variable name so i have still the vari variable name pce but um, this is the population so this is a problem so this is where map 2 will come into play so i obviously don't want to use a loop for that not because i don't really like loops but because I think what I'm going to show you is again more concise and more elegant easier to understand and to debug but of course it's easier to understand once you have seen it once you have worked a little bit with it but then I think once you, you are familiar with map and reduce getting familiar with what I'm showing you now map 2 will be uh, relatively easy so what I want is so I have already one ingredient, I have my function, so I need the second ingredient, I need um, a, a list, I need, in this case, a data frame, right, with list columns, which is the, I think, one of the um, best objects ever invented in computing history. So uh, I will start with my data set, so I don't need to filter it before or whatever, I, I start with my data set, and I apply what I we've learned last time, which is I group by my, uh, I think it's called variable, right? Variable, variable, right? It's not called variable names. And I nest, and let's take a look. So this, again, creates, so my, my uh, color scheme here is not uh, very nice. I, I think I would change the color scheme in the next videos to something uh, that is more visible for you guys. But anyway, here I have a data frame or a table with two columns. So in one column I have my variable, uh, which is a, char a string, a characters, strings, PC, pop, p, save, etc. And then I have a table with three columns and the uh, all the time periods. So the three columns are actually the ones that remain once you group by variable. So you have the date, value, and value zero one. Okay. So now to this table, I want to add a new column which contains my plots. So remember that this list uh, columns are very flexible and that inside each of these cells you can have anything. Last time we had linear models, but you could have plots or you could have really, I mean, really whatever, whatever any, any object. So we want to have plots in there, but my function takes two arguments, not just one. So map, remember, only takes one list and a function that takes one argument, which are the elements of that list. Here we have a function that takes two uh, arguments, two elements. So we need two lists. That's what we have here. We have one list with our variable names and we have another list with the data that we are going to use. So I'm going to write something that might be a bit uh, difficult to understand at first, but then, then we'll, we're going to go through it together. So I, call, uh, I create a new column called plots which uh, will use not map3 but map2 and map2 has uh, three arguments dot x which is the first list so uh, in this case it will be well, it could be variable and then dot y which is going to be data and then a function and i'm going to use the little tilde here 
and I'm going to explain to you why. And my function takes as an argument dataset, which is now dot y, and uh, uh, date, which is now dot uh, da -da no, 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 not date. It's the variable. So that's why I was here a bit. It's variable, which is now dot x. x. And hopefully this should work. And it worked. So now I have a new column with ggplots. So let's let's say that first first of all let's say that and then we'll go through it. So let me call that uh, economics long result. And let's take a look at so if I look at plots, for example number one, I have my plot for PCE. If I take a look at number two, I have for population. So it's ordered. So we, the third one will be P save RT. So let's take a look. As you see, we have this very nice uh, thing that looks like a non-stationary time series, a bit like a random walk. Um, so that's it, we're done. The nice thing about that is that if you have 50 variables, it's exactly the same code. It will work exactly the same. So what is this? So let's zoom in a little bit. Map2 is um, a general generalization of map. So it takes two lists now, dot .x and dot .y. These two lists are my list columns from before. So variable on one hand, right? And my data which is called, here yeah, in this case, data, okay? My plot, make plot, will take each of these in turn as an input to generate my plot. So for make plot, the first argument now is what I called dot y, which is the data, okay? So data set equals dot y. So this is going to take whatever is inside this list and go through it. One, two, three, four, five. Same with variable. So var will take whatever is inside dot x um, one after the other. So one, two, three, first data set, second data set, and so on. So dot var is uh, my variable. So here it's not a data set, sorry, it's the name of the variable. So it's the name of the variable. And it's going to use that. Now I have used this tilde here. So this is um, actually I don't I don't even remember why that's useful. I know I think I have to add it. Let's try without it, but I don't think it's going to work yet. It's not going to work. And the reason, if I remember, it's it has something to do with the fact that map two does not understand that this is um, a function. If you add the arguments here, if you remove them. Now map2 knows that this is a function and it should also work. Let's try. Oh, it didn't. Sometimes I get confused by that because sometimes sometimes you don't need to put in the arguments. I always do because it's uh, more explicit. I prefer explicit to implicit. Um, some remains of my uh, Python years. But um, this has to do with uh, with you know, map to not understanding that this is a function. And this thing, this tilde, kind of converts that thing to a function, right? And this is also useful, and uh, we will, uh, I will also make a video dedicated to anonymous functions. This is a way to create an, anom an anom anonymous function. Well, in this case, it's not an anonymous function, but this kind of forces it to be a function. So I'm not 100% sure why it's needed now, so I just, took it as a habit. Um, I, I might want to read the documentation here again, and I, I would uh, suggest you do as well. But just take my word for it, use the tilde here, um, and it's gonna, it's, gonna make it, uh, it's gonna make it work, as you saw. So then there's an, a, a generalization to as many as arguments as you want. There's a map, map2, and then pmap. So pmap takes here a list of arguments um, but I'll leave it to you as a as a homework because this video has been going on for 15 minutes almost. So, um, but in next time 
I'm going to I think I'm going to discuss the tidy evaluation um, so how to take this and put it here so how to make it more general uh, general um, I'm going to do a video about that and then or maybe before that I don't know uh, I'll see how inspired I am I'll make a video about anonymous functions because first of all this is an important concept when you're working with um, with functional programming and also because uh, base R is going or maybe has already so the very latest version so I don't know if it has been released yet or if it's going to be released the very latest version will have um, anonymous functions with uh, well there you'll have a new constructor to create anonymous functions because you already had anonymous functions I think if you write something like uh, something like that should work um, let's try I, I don't know if this is going to work but I think it works so if you do something like uh, uh, this should be nine yeah you see so this is an anonymous an, an anonymous function but you'll have um, a shortcut to create new anonymous functions so I'll have to update R for that and then um, I'll, uh, I'll discuss that next time so I hope you enjoy it I hope you have learned something new and uh, as usual uh, stay healthy First of all, that's the most important thing right now. And if you have any questions, just leave a comment below. Have a nice evening and a nice weekend.